Hey, welcome back to Eat Crime Bites, Season 2, Episode 13. We're bringing you Cyber Stalking with Julian Alonzo Martin. And if you haven't watched our first four acts, it's going to be hard to understand this, but we're getting into the punishment for Julian and all the background of what he did to be punished comes in acts one through four. So let me give you a real, real quick tour. Julian Martin has an ex-wife. He's threatening her. He wants more custody of his son uh, because she has custody. He's threatening her stepfather. So the stepfather has never even met Julian and is being threatened by him. The stepfather works at a private school and Julian's been trying to turn him in for child porn. So making his life hell by investigations that end up leading nowhere because this guy isn't actually viewing child porn. It's just Julian saying that he is. So that was the family. And then later on, I showed you that Julian didn't stop at his family. He threatened everybody. He was let go of a valet company that he worked for and he went and threatened tons of coworkers. So he threatened supervisors, coworkers, said he was going to come in and beat their ass. And it was just kind of off the wall. So now this point, this is where we're going to talk about the law finally catching up with Julian. So at some point, the law had enough with Julian's shenanigans and they were doing an interview with him and they said, listen, how would you feel? If you were on the other end of all this bullshit that you've been doing to other people, you know, what if you were getting emails that said, I'm going to beat your ass, or you're getting voicemails that say, you know, one, two, Freddie's coming for you and all this other crazy shit. How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel threatened? Oh God. And this, this had to be the fucking turning point in the case. This is where Julian says, no because I'm a lion and everybody else are gazelles. <laughs> I imagine the officer just had to just laugh inside and be like, what the fuck is up with this guy? You know, he tried to try to get a little empathy out of him and he answers with no, because I'm a lion and everybody else are gazelles. Okay. So, so one of the last few threats that were, was documented in the research that I could bring you. This is in February 21st of 2021. So Martin, filed for unemployment benefits through the state. And he said it was because he was terminated because of COVID related reasons, the pandemic, not because he had COVID, just the pandemic made everybody lose business. And he was laid off because of that. That was his story. So at some point, the company has got to say to the state, that's not true. He we, was actually fired for reason. You know, he was threatening employees and other stuff. It wasn't actually COVID. So you can imagine that pisses Martin off. And then he starts emailing the HR people inside that company, things like this. And I'm just going to read you the colorful portions because he goes off again. And he says, I'm just letting you know, if y'all keep trying, if y'all keep not trying to get me my check, I'm going to have to come get it from you guys. Now, I don't know if you heard, now he spelled herd wrong. He spelled it like the animals, H-E-R-D. I don't know if you heard the story, but I'm extremely incognito and I'll wait until the coldest day with the least visibility to come get my check from your managers. I've walked past the office every single day, wondering if anybody purposely is keeping my check from entering my pocket. God, this motherfucker is colorful. And another thread, he says, just letting you know if I ever find, and then he names a couple of coworkers or any of those racist drug addict employees. I'm going to bloop them. Unlike ever seen. I don't know what bloop is. I imagine kick their ass. I don't know. I've made it my 2021 mission to get it retribution against this company. Blame them for going out of their way to protect drug addicts that show up to work high. Thank somebody's name for telling my unemployment. I got fired for misuse of time clock. LOL. Well, I'm going to mess with all your guys time clock. And then in another one, it says just simply y'all have three days. I think he's maybe counting down to something. I don't know. Okay. So I think this is our last threats that we go through. So another victim then sent these text messages that Martin sent to them 
after Martin somehow found their phone number. The state, the message stated, and this is still, again, one of these coworkers that he works with. I'll make a deal with you. You tell me when this other coworker is in the office alone. I'll take care of everything. Matter of fact, you give me their info. I'll leave you alone. Y'all got my info. Y'all got my social B-Day name, etc. Except he spelled etc. wrong. Until y'all depart from, from my information, I'll be following you as my life's hobby. Crazy, right? All right. So after that, after that, finally, May 24th of 2022, there's an indictment against Martin. And there's six counts. So let me go through the counts. The first one is for cyber stalking the ex-wife. The second one, cyber stalking the ex-wife's stepfather. Poor guy, never even met Martin, was cyber stalked. Counts three through five are interstate transmission of a threat to injure a person up of another count six is impersonating an officer of the United States. So after the indictment, there's, you know, court does its court thing. There's, there's a bunch of stuff that goes on. There's motion practice where, you know, you try to get certain evidence thrown out and so forth. And one particular motion caught my eye. This happened on November 3rd of 2022. It was a motion for a medical exam. Now, if you heard me in my prior acts, I said, I wonder if this guy has a detachment from reality. I think maybe somewhere along the line, his own attorneys wonder the same thing because this motion came from his own attorneys and said, we want a medical exam of our client. They have reason to believe that the defendant may presently be suffering from a mental disease or defect, rendering him mentally incompetent to the extent that he's unable to understand the nature and consequences of the proceedings against him or to assist properly in his defense. Accordingly, the defendant, meaning Martin, moves the court to order a mental health examination. I didn't find anything else. That was it. Like, I didn't find, yes, the examination happened. Here's the results or here's the results and they're sealed. Nothing. Nothing. So I wonder what happened to that because that too much longer, probably less than a year. So it would be um, March 15th of 2023, Martin plead guilty. So I imagine they couldn't let him plead guilty to something unless that issue of his mental capacity was ironed out and he was found to be competent, at least in the legal sense. So at this plea, he pled guilty to two of the counts, both of the cyber stalking counts, count one and count two. So his ex-wife and the ex-wife stepfather. Each of those carries a maximum five years each. Here's a little snippet I found in the court documents I thought you'd want to know. It's sad. His ex-wife shut down her online business as a result of all of Martin's online stalking and posting messages on social media accounts. So she lost livelihood because of him fucking around online and threatening her over over a child custody is what it seems like. So on September 11th of this year, 2023, he was sentenced. He was sentenced to 46 months to count one and 46 months to count two to run concurrently. So he basically being sentenced both at the same time. So he only has almost four years, not quite two months short of four years. All right. I don't know. To me, that seemed kind of light. For as much as he was threatening people, four years seemed very light. Well, that just may be me. I don't know. I've read through a lot of the um, the threats. There's a lot of threats in here I didn't even put into this episode. And again, four years just seemed like for companies having to change their security practices because of him, four years seemed very light. When he's finally released after four years, he is going to be supervised for three years after that. He is ordered to pay a $200 fine. Um, didn't see like a big restitution of any sort in this case. So he was sentenced in a, a U.S. District Court before a judge, Susan Richard Nelson. And Susan Richard Nelson had a statement to make that I thought was pertinent enough to read to you. They said... The case is one of the most vicious and cruel cyber stalking cases she's ever encountered. 
Judge Nelson reflected on the impact of Martin's actions on the victims, stating that Martin committed acts capable of destroying the lives of his victims. All right. When I was researching this case, the whole time I was thinking, God, this guy sounds so much like Jason Lydell. So I wondered if the the judge the judge obviously didn't know Jason must not have known Jason Lydell if they said this is the most vis vicious because I would say Julia Martin and Jason Lydell are probably in the running for two of the most douchiest cyber stalkers that I've ever read about. All right, and a few other conditions upon release. Once he's released, he can't possess or use a computer or access any online service without prior approval of the government. If he does use the internet, if they do say, okay, you can get on the internet, he's got to agree to all sorts of monitoring. He's got to put electronic monitoring on all his devices that he's allowed to use at any time they can access that device and see what it is he's doing at any particular time. He also has to face mental health examinations and evaluations. Um, they also said if they recommend any treatment, you have to take the treatment and you have to go into treatment, which is based upon the threats that I've read, probably a good thing for Martin and everybody around Martin. So that's it. God, I hope you held on to your seat because there was a lot of just crazy, off the wall, horrendous threats. I will tell you, we are just scratching the surface in this case. I know it might seem like it was long hearing all those threats, but this is still just the surface of this case, just the tip of the iceberg. And it was so much like Jason Lydell that when I was reading it, it was, it was really weird. I mean, I, personally, I would have been in as much fear as all the other victims in this case receiving this threats because they seem real. They seem genuine. They seem like a person that wanted to come and hurt them. And by the point where he said, one, two, Freddy's coming after you, that's the point where the hairs would have stuck up on the back of my neck. And I probably would have, if I would have worked there and he would have been threatening me, I probably would have found a different job at that point. So in this case, because the cyber stalker has to send their threats to the victims, there's usually an immense amount of data, and we saw it in this case. There was an immense amount of data in this case. We saw it in Jason Lydell case too. And a lot of it can be damning, and it was in this case. And I think that's part of the reason why he had to plea in the end is because there's probably so much communication where he just looks like the most craziest stalker out there that he just had to plead to probably get the lightest sentence possible for his best interest. I also have the feeling Martin's probably not done stalking. I don't get the impression that when faced with consequences from the law that Martin says, you know what, maybe I better stop cyber stalking. We saw him continue on and cyber stalk just tons and tons of other people, even though the law and vet, you know, they arrested him at some points. He was under investigation at other points. They were interviewing him at other points. So he didn't seem to really care. And I think later on, you're going to see him going back and threatening people if he's not already. So with that, if there's anything you liked in this episode, please like, subscribe, thumbs up, follow, whatever the positive affirmation thing is on the, the application you're watching or hearing us on. Um, if you haven't been to our website, please go there. It's ecrimebytes.com. Bytes spelled the computer way, B-Y as in yellow milk, T-E-S dot com. And next week, oh my God, I don't like to take cases like this very often. And just to give you a little bit of snippet into my life, researching this podcast can get a little hairy at times where I basically have alerts on things and computer crime being one of them where Google says, Hey, these things have happened recently and these are the different cases associated with them. And then I have to go kind of comb through these cases to find the fun ones to research and bring to you. I will say probably 80% plus of the cases that come to me that way are child pornography cases. And I just get weirded out every time I flip through the, the titles, I hate them. And I don't want to take them, but they're like 80% plus of computer crime out there. So every once in a while, I got to kind of pick one and put it in here to just show you how heinous some people can be on the internet. Now, I'm just going to warn you up front. There's going to be some difficult discussions in this next episode because it's Officer Timothy 
Horwath sentence for child pornography. And we're going to talk about child pornography, but I'm trying not to talk too much about it that might trigger people. But we're going to talk about some crappy stuff that Timothy Horwath did as a police officer involved with child pornography. So we're going to kind of talk around it some. Uh, so just do be, be prepared for that. So I only try to take cases like this every once in a while, maybe once or twice a year. And I try to pick ones that are very special, like a police officer who decides to use child pornography. And it's, in my opinion, even worse than Joe Citizen out there getting involved with child pornography because a police officer is somebody that you would assume you could trust in pretty much any circumstance. And they're viewing child pornography, which is not a good thing. So we're going to bring you Officer Timothy Horwath being sentenced for child pornography next week. Look to see you there. Thanks. Bye.